Hey, it's Ken with my Math Assistant. I just wanted to give you a quick tour of what the student sees when they log into my Math Assistant. So you can see this student has lessons 61 through 63 on their dashboard. I'm going to jump straight into lesson 63. And if you have the facts practice turned on, the first thing they will be presented with is the facts practice for that lesson that you have chosen for them. Um, or it will be the default that Saxon has them uh, work through as they work through their book. So you can see in this case I have multiplication facts so they can type in the answer. They can either click the check answer button after each answer or they can just hit the enter key which is of course the fastest way to do it. Uh, you could even teach your kids some numpad skills a little bit if you have the right kind of keyboard. So I'm going to type in a couple answers here so you can see what that looks like, 15 and 12. If you miss one, it'll actually show you the correct answer because the goal is for them to learn these math facts. It'll change the bar just so they can kind of see what uh, it's good to give them the feedback. All right, am I getting things right? Am I getting them wrong? Um, that way I can correct my understanding and my, uh, my knowledge. Uh, after they've finished the uh, facts practice, I'll show you what that looks like if I go to lesson 62. So this student has finished the facts practice for lesson 62. It shows you your score. They got 25 correct, 5 incorrect, and it also shows them the problems that they missed and what the correct answers were. So again, they can uh, correct their understanding, hopefully get them right the next time they come across that same facts practice. Um, so let me go back to lesson 63. Once they finish the facts practice, uh, they will go to the warm-up section, depending on if you have that turned off or on. Again, those are some settings you can see in the, uh, the video I created about the parent dashboard. They'll type in their answers to the particular questions, and you can see in this case the student has gotten all of the uh, warm-up questions correct. They have a few lesson practice problems that they need to go over again, as well as mixed practice. So what I have my kids do is if they get one wrong, they come back to it. Uh, they rework the problem on their paper. They try again. Uh, so in this case, the correct answer is 1 and 11 twelfths. So let's say they reworked the problem on their paper, got it correct this time. I'm going to type that in as 1 and 11 twelfths. I'm going to hit check answer, and now it turns green. And when you get your email report for, the, for uh, when they finish the lesson, you'll know how many attempts it took them on each question. So if you see one that they took eight attempts on or something, then you would want to maybe still go over that with them. Uh, you can see there are some hints here. Uh, there are obviously all kinds of math problems in Saxon. Some require decimal answers, some require fractions. Uh, I try my best to give them hints so they know exactly how they're intended to, uh, how they're expected to answer each particular question. And then there are occasionally some hints on how to type in a particular question. For example, there isn't a fraction line on the keyboard, so you use this forward slash. Um, that gives them hints there. If my students, let's say on this uh, question C, they just can't get it right, they've tried it a few times, they can't get it, then what I have them do is click the I need help button and move on to the next question. Forget about that one for a moment. Let's move on. Let's finish our lesson. At the end of the lesson, again, I'll get an email. It tells me all of the problems that they need help with, and then I'll go over those with them later. That way they can continue moving and not get too stuck. So you can see this uh, student needs to spend a few minutes going back, reworking a few problems, and then uh, when they're done, I'll spend a few minutes going over this lesson with them. There are a few other things. If your student... Uh, does a custom set of questions in each lesson that you assign to them. They'll have a mark complete, uh, mark lesson complete button up here. It's green. And whenever they are finished with the questions that you have assigned to them, then they can click that button and it'll give them the option to complete uh, their lesson. Lessons that are fully completed, of course, drop off their dashboard. The lessons that they still need to do some work on will remain here. Um, and of course they can jump to any lesson at any time so let's say they want to go back and see something on lesson 30 they can click that and go back and see what they did there there's a scores tab uh, where they can actually see the progress that they've made through their course uh, the scores they've gotten on all the lessons and tests the scores they've received on the facts practice if you have the timer turned on it'll tell you uh, how long it took them on the facts practice as well as what date they started each lesson so you can kind of keep a timeline of how they're progressing.